Thanks, Eileen. Uh, uh, I'm the General Secretary of the National Union of Teachers, and I'm on this housing demonstration because the children in our schools, their parents, their, their teachers, the support staff in the schools, they need good housing, they haven't got it. Families are being ripped apart before Grenfell. Yeah. Families being ripped apart by the bedroom tax, where families have to move children ripped out of their communities. Not just by the bedroom tax, but by private landlords jacking up the rent so that the parents can't afford to pay it. Children lost from their communities. We see it all the more now through the prism, through the lens of the tragedy at Grenfell. The fact that children there we, we think that those children, if their parents want it, they need to be able to stay in their community. Absolutely. They need to be able to stay in their schools. This isn't just about learning, but they need to be able to stay with their teacher. They need to be able to stay with their classmates. You can't pile tragedy upon tragedy, and as well as being a survivor from that horrible event, them being ripped out of that. So they need to be able to stay, and we've written National Union of Teachers, along with the Association of Education Psychologists, the ATL and the NAHT to government to demand that people are, are staying there permanently for as long as they want and staying in their school communities. We also have to demand, we also have to demand that those schools, that they, they need resource. They yeah. need grief counsellors. They'll yeah. need them for a long time. Those children need that, and government has to step up. That council isn't stepping up. Government has to do it. I'll tell you, we wrote to, to, to Justine Greening, the Education Secretary, in October last year to raise the question that they, the government is reducing the presumption that when you build a new school it will have fire sprinklers. They've made a decision to reduce the presumption for that. Many new schools now being built without fire sprinklers. We decided to write to them again this week and we wrote along with the ATL and the Fire Brigades Union. But when we look back at the notes of the meeting that we had after our letter in October, we saw, we hadn't realised it at the time, they've not only reduced the presumption for fire sprinklers in schools, they at the same time reduced the presumption that schools would be compartmentalised against the spread of fire, just like they had done. They, they'd not done that in Grenfell. And they reduced the presumption that cladding on the schools would not be flammable at the same time. Now, the school at the base of the tower, the academy school, was clad first. The cladding on the tower reflects the cladding on the school. These things can't be divided up one against the other. We need safe schools, we need safe housing, and we have to fight for it now. And I tell you, you cannot believe, one of the reasons that house prices are going through the roof, which creates the space for private landlords to jack up the rent, one of the reasons for that is the multi-millionaires worldwide buying property in this city for speculation. They drive up the prices. And none of us could believe that any of them would ever live in a tower block that wasn't compartmentalised, that didn't have fire sprinklers, that didn't have fireproof cladding on the outside. These people look down on teachers. We had two members in the tower. Both of them survived, but family members dying for them. But teachers, other people in that tower, they look down on us. They don't care about our lives. They make their profit. They live in safe buildings. They don't care about ordinary people, and we have to make them care. Thank you very much for being here. Let's step up.